Today, I'm showing you how to make a rotary phone lamp. For this project, we will be using a rotary telephone. I believe this was the typical phone you'd find in most Canadian homes up until the early 90s. This specific one was made in Canada by Northern Electric. We will also be using 24 inch gooseneck tubing with male threads at each of the ends and their corresponding nuts. Some vintage style 18-2 wire, 22 low voltage copper wire, a rotary switch, quarter inch inside diameter plastic tubing, some bonding putty, a plug end, two mini LED pot lights with their corresponding drivers, some super glue, some electrical solder and flux for soldering, and a stencil template in the event that you would like to spray paint the phone. This entire phone lamp kit is available at ottawapipeart.ca. Let's get started. We begin by disassembling the phone. I started by removing the plastic dial. To do this, you can take a push pin and stick it through the tiny hole that's between the zero and the nine. Then turn the dial all the way around and push the pin down. The pin will push down a tiny lever and as you continue to turn, the dial should pop right off. Removing just two screws from the bottom allows you to pull the cover off the base. Next is removing the interior components as most of them are no longer needed. To remove this part that looks like a car battery, I use a rotary tool to grind out the rivets from the bottom side. Out of curiosity, I opened up this part to see what was inside. Turns out it was filled with electronics and a bunch of funny smelling transparent grease. Next is separating the faceplate from the parts below it, making sure that you save all the pieces from the top. From from the bracket below, we pretty much remove everything. With the disassembly finished, we can now start modifying. We're going to attach the rotary switch to the pin that has the silver gear on it. But first, we have to remove the gear. I forgot to push record for this part, but I did this just by melting it off with a torch. Then I grinded it off the nipple that was on the same end as the gear with a rotary tool. This part has a piece that sticks out that stops the dial from turning more than 360 degrees. That's not something we want on a phone lamp, so that also got ground off. With these two pieces modified, we can now reassemble the top part of the bracket. I cut about one inch of plastic tubing and used super glue to fasten one end to the pin that we modified earlier and the other end to the rotary switch. With the switch fastened to the bracket, we can now reinstall the bracket to the base of the phone. We need to stabilize the base of the switch so that it doesn't turn with the top of the switch while it's being rotated. I did this by mixing some bonding putty and putting it around and underneath the bottom of the switch. Next was emptying the headset and I was surprised to see that the microphone and the speaker were already removed. We need to cut holes through the speaker and microphone caps. I did this by using a drill press and a 1 and 1 8 inch hole saw. I figured now was a good time to prepare the phone for painting before going any further. Painting is obviously optional but this one had a bunch of white spots on it that were very difficult to remove. I scuffed the surfaces with 800 grit sandpaper, gave it a prime coat, and then finished with a top coat of metallic carbon mist. Letting that dry, it's now time for some wiring. I started by wiring the drivers up to the switch. These are basically step-down transformers that take 120 volts of alternating current and bringing it down to low voltage direct current. I wired the primary side in parallel and connected one of the leads to the switch. Next, we need to pass the low voltage wire through the gooseneck tubing. The straighter it is, the easier this will be. I rolled it out with my hands and then gently rotated it through the vise. With the wires run through, we can now connect them to the secondary side of the drivers. I also wired this side in parallel. However, the next time I make this lamp, I will wire them in series on the secondary side. Although this lamp turned out just fine, after doing some testing, it seems as though there's less chance of the lights flickering when the secondary side is wired in series. Regardless of how you wire it, be sure that your polarities are correct and that your drivers are identical. And a little pro tip for you, make sure the nut is on the threads of the gooseneck before you make your connections. After fixing that mistake, it was time to connect the LEDs. They fit perfectly inside the holes that we cut earlier. All we have to do is cut the spring-loaded flaps down so that they sit inside the cap nicely. I ran the wire through the headset and fastened the gooseneck tubing with the nut. After soldering an extension on the earpiece bulb, I was able to pass it through the headset and wire up both bulbs in parallel. The last connection to make is soldering the common wire on the power cord to the remaining primary wires on the drivers. Then we wire up the plug end, making sure that the hot wire is on the gold screw and the common wire is on the silver screw, and give it a test to make sure we wired everything correctly. 
When screwing the caps back on, I think it's a good idea to counter twist them first so that the wires don't sit twisted inside of the headset. Next was fastening the stencil to the faceplate of the phone. After a little bit of preparation, I spray painted two coats of a flat white finish. I made sure to remove the stencil before the second coat dried to be sure that the numbers wouldn't come with it. Then I reassembled just as we took it apart, but I added some black cardstock underneath the dial. Using pliers to stop the switch from turning, I turned the dial until it clicked into position. Before replacing the cover, I widened the slot just a tiny bit so the gooseneck would fit nicely, as well as cutting a slot into the base of the phone. After tightening the nut, we can now reinstall the cover. All that's left is wrapping the telephone cord around the gooseneck and then fastening each end with a zip tie. Plug it in, turn it on, and we have ourselves a phone lamp. If you would like to own this phone lamp, all you have to do is smash the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel by October 19th, 2020, in order to be entered into a contest giveaway. I will announce the winner on or before my next YouTube video. Please see more details in the description below. Lamps like this are available at audiblepipeart.ca.